Welcome to the tutorial Understanding the Library. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the structure of the library as well as go into the concept of symbols and templates. So to begin, let's go to the library, which is generally found behind the Tool Properties tab. And then let's expand it so it takes up this full space here. So the library is a place that you can store characters, backgrounds, props, anything that you've made um, in the software so that you can reuse it in a different scene throughout different projects on different computers. You can even like transfer templates that are stored in the library um, through the network to other people's computers and they can use it in the software on their own system. So there are two types of files that you can store in the library and those are symbols and templates. So to create a symbol, which we haven't done yet in Animate Pro, but we did do in the previous Animate videos, um, you just have to select whatever you want to create into a symbol and you press this button here at the top. And then you can rename it to whatever you want. Like that. And then you'll see that instead of changing anything here in the timeline, it actually just added this in the symbol library, it's denoted by this Lego brick icon. What a symbol is exactly, and uh, I think Flash users are a bit more familiar with it than maybe uh, Toon Boom software users, but it's like a container that you can contain um, an entire animated sequence in. You can just uh, have one character in it, you can have multiple body parts, um, a single body part, and then connect them together in the timeline. Um, it's just like a container that you can then animate directly on. And if I drag this into the timeline, you can see that's denoted by this film strip. That's how you can tell the difference between what a symbol is in the timeline and what uh, regular drawings are in the timeline, or even templates because templates look identical to the original. Um, the difference though is that symbols are actually linked to the original. And what this means is that if I make a change to this symbol that's currently in my timeline, that change will be saved and updated in the symbol that's currently in the symbol library. And if I've dragged and dropped this symbol several times throughout my project, then this change that I've made will effectively be updated throughout my entire project throughout all those symbols. The way to manipulate or make a change to a symbol is that you simply have to double click somewhere on this film strip in the timeline and then now you're inside that container, you're inside that symbol. And what is inside that symbol is exactly what is outside it. That's the template that we encapsulated or encased in the symbol. It's that Karate Rabbit Master. Um, and you can tell that you're inside a symbol due to several visual indications. Uh, the first being this crosshair here. Uh, secondly, at the top you can see the Lego brick um, and the symbol name. And then beside it, that you can return to the scene using the top or home link. Like that. Whenever you create or make a symbol that you put in your symbol library, it is local to that scene. And what that means is that you can only access this symbol in this scene. If you create or open a new scene on your computer, this symbol library will be empty or it will not have this symbol in it. Um, if you would like this symbol to be available to multiple scenes or multiple projects on your computer, then you'd have to create a template from it. So that's one of the big differences because with templates, um, not only are they not linked to the original, so if I made a change to this template here or a template that I dragged and dropped from the template library, it would not update throughout these templates. Um, not to mention that if I open up a different scene or if I create a new scene on my computer, uh, these templates will in fact be there. Uh, they exist on a place on my hard drive, so I can always search for them, but they will open up automatically. So now let's take a look at the library structure. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the view menu, which is right here. So if you click on it, you can see that you have three menu items, view, edit, and folders. Um, these are all the options that also exist if you right click in certain, uh, certain windows of the library. Um, but you can find them all here. Uh, one of the main ones that we use often is that there's a lock, as you can see on the Animate Pro library. So you can either right click and say right to modify to be able to then modify things in that library. But that also exists uh, under the edit menu here. You can create folders uh, through here. You can open and close libraries. You can view the symbols or templates as lists, thumbnails, or details. So everything can generally be found in this menu here. 
Uh, we also have a toolbar here, which once again is another um, redundancy, which is generally good. Sometimes people have difficulties finding things either through this menu because they don't see it or right clicking. So we have a very obvious toolbar here that does all those things. You can open a library, you can close a library, you can create a new folder, delete a folder, you can refresh. Um, you can view your templates or symbols in the right side of the library as uh, lists, what it is right now, as details, which gives you some type of information. Here it's telling you that it's a template and not a symbol. Um, or as thumbnails, which people find uh, very useful because they can see um, an actual little thumbnail of your template. Um, and if you don't like this toolbar and you find it sort of bulky and it gets in the way, you can always get rid of it by going to Windows, Toolbars, Library View, and it eliminates it, or you can bring it back uh, exactly the same way. So this brings me into the next part of the library right here, which is the Drawing Substitution or Preview window. So if you click on a template, um, you can actually preview it um, if it's an animated template by clicking on the Play button here, like that. You can even make this bigger, so you can even see it bigger, which is a pretty neat thing. If you have a template with multiple drawings, like I know we have for the Karate Master, then if you slide along these nudges, you can see that you know you can see the three-quarter and profile view, which is pretty cool. So you can see what else exists in that template uh, through this preview window here. Um, the next part of the library is where we house the actual library. So we have a symbol library and we have the Animate Pro library. So the symbol library is unique you cannot create another symbol library. This is the only place in your scene where symbols can be housed. You can make subfolders for your symbol by right-clicking and saying new folder and then one appears beneath. Um, so you can at least organize your symbols but you can never create another symbol folder uh, because they are so unique in their coding they can only be stored um, here. However for the template libraries such as the Anime Pro library um, you can create many, many subfolders, and you can open up other um, libraries uh, that have templates in them. So templates are less finicky. So the last part of the library is the one that I've pretty much already showed you. Um, the only thing that you might want to know is that through right-clicking, you can once again change the views, which is, I think, the only thing you need to know about it. Um, and otherwise, it's really just there so you can see what are in uh, your libraries that are listed here on the left side. So that's it for the tutorial, Understanding the Library. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Structuring the Library.